Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Hints, Tips, and Tricks for Hearts of Iron 4. I am Bridger, and today we are going to battle school. We're talking all about battle plans. We're going to cover the basics very quickly, and then we're going to go into the much more advanced topics of battle plans, things that probably not everybody knows. So let's start. You can easily uh, create a front line and get some battle plans going by clicking on a general. You can then hit the front line or the Z key and left click to create a front line against that force. Then you can hit the offensive line, which is X, and you can create an offensive line. Boom. Basic battle plan. Easy. Done. What we've done is assigned everybody in this army to a single offensive line from a single front line. That's a very simple way of doing things. But... Let's talk about some of the more advanced topics that there are when it comes to using the various hotkeys and things that come to battle plans. Well, one of the very useful ones that I have found is if you're trying to micro a unit that's part of a battle plan and you just want that unit to stop doing anything, it can be helpful to unassign it from whatever it's assigned to. But how do you do that? Well, you could individually click on all of the things but what if you wanted to do with all six of these it takes a long time you got to scroll you got to find them all or you can hold control which puts you into assignment mode you can see it light up down here when i hit the control button and then you hit h h is normally the key that tells your unit to stop what it's doing but when you're in assignment mode it tells it to stop being assigned so watch this 39 turns into 33 because i just took away these six they gained the little exclamation point meaning it has uh no orders assigned uh so if we wanted to reassign them to a new or existing battle plan we can hold down the assignment button again control and then we can left click and now they're assigned again so that will assign it to a front or it will sign it to an offensive line or it will sign it to a fallback line so let's look at a slightly more complex version of this shall we what if we wanted to build two different offensive lines coming from two different fronts? Well, we could create two different armies, right? We could just select these guys and make their own army. Only, oh, we don't have any more field marshals. And what if we wanted to put more than 24 guys in here? Uh, and what we really want to do is get this field marshal to increase his skill. And the best way to do that is to put a lot of guys under him. So having these guys in their own army isn't going to work out for us this time. Well, there is a way to do it. So we'll select just these ones in the south and we hit Z or we click on front line and then you click and drag with the right mouse button instead of left clicking and now we've created a special front line with only 13 divisions on it because we had certain units that are unassigned already selected when we created that front line it automatically assigned them to it this is somewhat inconsistent so for example if I have these units selected and I create a new front line it will not automatically assign everyone to this front line it will only assign the 10 divisions that i had selected that were not already assigned to something so that's very important to keep in mind so let's select everybody in the north that's in this army and we'll put them over here uh, and i feel like we are missing there we go 26 now so i'm holding down control and left clicking on that front line in order to assign them to it now We've got them assigned to different front lines, and we can do different offensive lines. So I could select the army, and then I could hit the offensive line button, and I can draw an offensive line. Oh no, I don't, I, I don't want it to go from the bottom front, I want it to go from the other front. So I hit the tab button a few times, and you can see that'll get it to tab back and forth between the two locations where it can find something to attach to. This will actually cycle through every conceivable location that this army has a front line on, but this is an easy way to, uh, to do this. But if you forgot to hit tab and maybe we put it on the wrong one, another way to fix this is to go into edit mode, and we're going to do that in a second. But you can see it only assigned the 13 that we had selected that came from this front line. So we have to fix this a little bit, don't we? Uh, it's not exactly what we want. We wanted this coming from the northern line, and we wanted those guys assigned to it. Well, we can go into assignment uh, to edit mode for the battle plan by holding Alt. Remember, Control is assignment mode, and Alt is edit mode. Now that we're in Alt, you can see this green path shows us where the front line, is, where this arrow is planning to go through, which provinces is attached to. I can drag from this original province and connect it instead to this front line over here. 
Ah, no, it's this province we have to drag there. There we go. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Now, it is unassigned everything, because remember, these 13 divisions were on this front line, and now we've moved it up here. They're still attached to that front line. This arrow is no longer, this whole offensive line is no longer attached to the southern battle plan uh, front. So we want to attach all 26 of these guys here. Now we could individually select them, but then, oh, we accidentally box selected some of the wrong ones. One of the easiest way to do this is we go back into assignment mode. We hold down right click, or we, sorry, we hold down control. Then we right click, right click, select the units assigned to the current battle plan. Then, holding down control, left click will assign them. So, hold down control, left click assigns, right click selects. This allows us to easily and quickly hold down control, right click on these 13 divisions, hit X to create an offensive line, and there we go. Boom. All right, so that's basic editing. Hold down Alt to edit. Then you can click and drag. You can also right click and drag offensive lines. And you can, of course, right click and drag the fronts themselves to extend them. And that is going to be required as your fronts move and change and shift over time. But there are plenty of other cool things you can do with battle plans. If we take a quick look here, we've got this front with Poland and we have a similar problem over here. We only have one other field marshal and we want him to control everything on this front. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll select these 12 and then we'll hit Z and create a front line against northern Poland here. So now they've already been assigned. We want everyone else in this army to create the front line here. So I select the, the entire army and I give them a brand new front and everybody who is currently unassigned automatically gets assigned to that front. So you can still see our 12 divisions are still assigned up here, and we have properly set aside the 51 divisions that are now assigned to this front. Well, that's great. So we've properly used what we learned in the previous section, but uh, there's another couple of things that need to be taken care of here. What I would like to do as part of this strategy is get this uh, this other army, this sort of mechanized force of motorized divisions and, and panzer divisions, um, I want to get them all in Prussia here and have them punch south and try to get to Warsaw really quick. Uh, that's not necessarily the best thing ever, but that's what we're going to do for this demonstration. So I've already got some of them over here, but there's another couple over here. If I just right click, uh, well, okay, that'll move the divisions that are already over here, but these guys aren't moving because... When you right click on a land territory, it by default will only move selected units that can take a land route to get there. It's not smart enough to know, hey, I want you to take, actually, it would potentially be a bad idea for it to auto route over the water just in case you didn't have naval superiority and then you'd complain at the AI for breaking your stuff. So how do we do this? Well, we've already got them in an army. An, an easy way to do this is to use battle plans, but let's do it the hard way first. So you can select units that are currently in a port then you can right click on another port and that will send them over there note that i can hit h to stop them if i right click on the on the port space uh it will also take them there so right click on a port space but they have to be in a port for this to work if i select on these guys they're not in not currently located in a port and i just right click on a port nothing happens right so I would have to move them here and then right click on the port. It's just it's just it's just a, a a huge inconvenience to have to do that. You could do this and then let's see if we hold shift. That does work. So you can give them waypoints if you want to. Uh, but that's still not ideal. The fastest and easiest method and I'm going to send these guys back here really quick so that we can get the proper effect. If you just want an entire army to take the easiest and fastest naval route, and you're not worried because it's peacetime or because you have naval superiority, one of the easiest way to do it is to give them a battle plan. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll create a fallback line just for this purpose. So I create a fallback line. I have selected the entire army. I create a fallback line. It doesn't have to be big. And then I will assign them to it if they aren't already by default assigned to it. And you can see Everybody's already currently moving. They're all now automatically going to take whatever closest port gets them to that fallback line and they'll move there. Boom. Done. Alternatively, and I'm going to hold control H to remove these guys from that battle plan for now. Alternatively, by the way, right click on the delete order button. 
will delete all orders for this army, so it's useful if you want to start from scratch with something. Okay, but when our units get Warsaw, that might not be it, right? We want them to finish closing the pocket, to finish doing other things. Uh, you can create multi-stage battle plans, and you do that by using the tab key as we just described. So, uh, we now that we have the same army selected, we choose offensive line again, X. And if we were to put one over here, you can see by default, it might go from the actual originating point. But if we hit tab, it'll do this. So now they'll take Warsaw and then they'll go this way. We could even tell them to only go one of these and wait on the other. So you could take Warsaw, then wait for your planning bonus to come back, and I'll tell you when to execute the second part of that plan. Then you could, if you want to continue, just make a third plan, and you could say, no, I don't want it to go from there, I want it to go from here. So you can make very complex plans using the tab key to cycle through. Now I'm going to delete all these to show you one of the very cool things that you can do. We'll use this big army here, right? I want all these guys in the north to have our own special arrow coming uh, coming to the north here, and I'm going to choose... Yeah, that's a good place, but hold down Alt, and then left-click and drag the arrow. I want to start from up here. I want to put some emphasis on that. And then all the rest of this army, uh, these guys... In fact, I can click... Because I want the rest, everybody that's not currently assigned to this order, I'm going to give them an offensive order to try and push for these. Like I said, this is not the best way to play. I'm just giving you some examples. So now we have two different arrows, but what if I wanted only one of them to fire? Well, that's a pretty cool thing you can do. So we'll hit declare war in order to make things go. Uh, and now we're able to fire these battle plans. So we click on this army and you shift click on activate. If you click on activate, it will activate all orders. Even for example, let's see if we have, uh, one more battle plan in us here to add the last piece of this. So we hold shift click and now we select the individual orders that we want to fire. And we can do that again, shift click and then we hold down shift click, bam. So now it's only firing these two. When these guys get all the way up to this line, they will stop and they will not proceed with this order, but they will proceed to plan for that order. A very valuable tool that you can use there. All right, so we got basic plans down. We got your control for assignment mode, your alt for edit mode. But there's one last thing to cover when it comes to battle plans, and that's the planning bonus. Most people know that you get this planning bonus that builds up over time, as long as your unit is not actually executing a plan. The exact way that this works is that if a unit is on a front line with an offensive order assigned, this planning bonus goes up. Any other condition and the bonus slowly ticks back down. If they're fighting, if they're moving, if they don't have a plan assigned, all of those conditions tick down the planning bonus at the same rate. What this means is for those of you out there that want to micromanage your troops, you can do so and still take advantage of this planning bonus. Here's how you do it. You build them up on the front line. We're going to let them build up this planning bonus here to a max of 50%. Now, here's a good question. Why would you want to micromanage your troops? The AI seems to do such a good job. Well, it does do a good job with infantry. It does not do a good job with tanks or fast troops at all. For example, I've set up a plan here to build a, a lightning strike down into Warsaw. However, this lightning strike is not so lightning when you let the AI take control. Look what the AI wants to do. It wants to take a seven province wide journey down to Warsaw. I really only want it to be two provinces wide, but they want it to be seven provinces wide. By the time we get to Warsaw, it'll be Christmas. All right, we need a lightning strike here. So we're gonna do this manually. So, I've let them build up their entire planning bonus. That bonus, by the way, affects attack and defense values when you are the aggressor in combat. So now we can delete the plan. We can then micromanage these troops. Uh, we will not have to worry about losing that planning bonus or the AI taking over and having them build this giant wide arc into Warsaw. No, we're going straight in. So I split and I say half of you are going this way. 
The other half of you are going that way, and then we'll start the time ticking, and we'll see how fast this takes us to do it versus how the AI did it. And the infantry came in to cover that, so now everybody's covered, and we're going to have these five tanks hit here and then hit Warsaw from the side. And just like that, we're hitting Warsaw from three directions using these very fast units without having to capture these six provinces and those seven provinces over there. We had a planning bonus the entire time, and there you go. That's how you use your planning bonus without battle plans. So this battle plan and lack of battle plan uh, situation here. There you go. Boom. Warsaw captured. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you have any more questions about battle plans or anything, leave them in the comments, and we'll potentially make a new video for you. And uh, this is Bridger signing off.